mechanism of pain how does pain functions what is the mechanism and mind always wonders how this mechanism of hope functions but it is never able to understand how does hope works whenever you are in misery sad and depressed you immediately try to escape from this and then you try to forget it this is how life continues and this is how the mechanism of hope functions you are miserable you will not have to wait for long the moment my talk is finished you will be in a different state therefore never try to escape from misery or whatever state you are in my talk may also be functioning as an escape you listen to me and you forget yourself while listening you have to be attentive towards me and towards yourself you turn your back you forget you forget what your real situation is i talk about bliss ecstasy and harmony that is real to me but to you it becomes a dream again it becomes the hope that if you meditate and if you work for it then it is going to happen to you do not use it as a drug you can use a master as a drug and you can be a drug this is what transcends my whole effort is to make you more and more and more aware so whenever you are in misery do not try to escape hope is the greatest end never hope and also never dream against the reality if you are sad then sadness is the reality at the moment remain with it without moving concentrate on it face it and let it be go to the very core of your sadness sometimes when people ask me how are you i say miserable they immediately shut off and they don't see anything because this is the situation of each one of us we are all miserable or sometimes i will say in response to the question how are you i do not know when i say i do not know i accept everything as it is and when i say i am good or bad it is a judgment i am judging a particular circumstance and situation and then responding suppose you meet someone and the person asks you how are you feeling and your response is not too well i have a little pain here and a pain there and so the person will immediately respond yes i too have that kind of pain and these things consume the mind concentrate on it face it let it be go to the very core of your sadness and in that it will vanish do not move to the opposite of it it is going to be a bitter experience in the beginning concentrating on sadness will be a bitter experience because when you face sadness 
it surrounds you from every corner. You become like a small island and sadness is an open, wide ocean surrounding you. You have no way to get out to be sure. This is the nature of sadness. You feel that you are standing in the middle, surrounded by the ocean all around and you do not know soon. When he is afraid and trembling to the very core, tremble, be afraid, but do not try to escape. Let be. Penetrate deeply into it. See, watch, but never judge. You have been doing that for millions of lives, judging the circumstance and situation, and nothing happened. So now, just watch, penetrate into it to its very core, Soon the bitter experience will not be so bitter. Soon out of the bitter encounter arises reality. Soon you will be moving, penetrating deeper and deeper and you will find the cause of mystery. And why are you so miserable? Once we find the cause, the solution is right there. The cause is not outside. It is always within you, hidden in your misery. Misery is just like the smoke. Somewhere there is fire inside you and that is not visible to you. Fire you cannot see. Only smoke is visible. Penetrate deep into the smoke so you can find the source of fire. Nobody can put the smoke out because the smoke is a byproduct of something that is being lit somewhere. But if you put the fire out, the smoke disappears of its own accord. Find the cause and the moment you find the cause, effect disappears because then something can be done. Because the cause is like the fire and effect of this cause is the state of mystery. You have to discover the cause first. And then once you have known the course, it will be easier to put out the smoke, put off the fire, the smoke that was an effect will automatically disappear. Remember only with the course can something be done, never with the effect. If you go on fighting with the effect, all fight will be futile and you will be wasting your energy. This is the meaning of Patanjali, the great scientist of the inner. His method was known as Prati Prasav. Prasav means the state of conception. When a child is conceived in the same way, the cause is conceived and then it continues to grow within. We forget the cause and we continue to see the effect. Prati Prasam is the process of going back to the cause. Penetrate the effect. Just as when you see the smoke somewhere, you are going to wait through the cloud of the smoke. It will be hard and arduous when you are wading through the thick cloud of smoke. You are nothing is visible. 
the effect of a smoke is choking your breath. The visibility is low, but your determination helps you to continue and until you find the source of the fire, the source from where the smoke is arising and their visibility becomes more. Because in the close vicinity of the fire, the, vis the visibility is somewhat better than a little away. The cause must be there somewhere inside. The effect is just like a smoke surrounding you. But once the smoke surrounds you, you escape into hope. You dream about days when there will be no smoke. This is all foolish. But this is what we do, knowingly or unknowingly. Not only is it foolish, but suicidal as well. Because this is how you are missing the cause and you continue to live your life. Patanjali speaks of discriminating person. Sanskrit word for discriminating is Vivek. The inner faculty that discerns. So discrimination is not the correct word because of its use. This word has gathered some dust around it. It means Vivek means awareness, consciousness and a force that can discriminate. Because through awareness you can discriminate between what is what, what is real, what is false, what is the effect and what is the cause. This is the actual meaning of the word discrimination, Vivek. But the word, the way it is used, we discriminate on various grounds. On the ground of ethnicity, on the ground of social status, and many things like that. But discrimination is between what is what, what is real, what is false, what is the effect and what is the cause. The discriminating person, the man of awareness, the man of Vivek, realizes that everything leads to mystery as you are Everything leads to mystery. And if you remain as you are, everything is certainly going to lead you into mystery. It is not a question of changing the situation. Instead, it is a question of a very deep-rooted thing within you. Something within you frustrates the very possibility of bliss, something in you goes against your flowering into a blissful state, the man of awareness comes to know that everything leads to mystery, everything without any exception. You have done everything but you have watched that everything leads to misery. If you hate, it leads to misery. And if you love, again it leads to misery. There seems to be no logical system in life. A man hates, it leads to misery. Simple logic will say that if hate leads to misery, then love must lead to happiness. So instead of hate, you begin to love. And that too leads to misery. What is this? 
Is life absolutely, absurdly rational? Is there no logic? Is it a cause? You do whatsoever you want and finally comes misery as the result. It seems that misery is the road and every road leads to it. From wherever you want to start, you can start. Right, left, in the middle. Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jain, man, woman, knowledge, ignorance, love, hate, everything leads to misery. If you are angry, it leads to misery. If you are not angry, that too leads to misery. It seems that misery is there in every world. Whatsoever you do is irrelevant. Whatever path you choose, you come to it. I have heard a story and I loved it always. A psychoanalyst was visiting a madhouse. He asked the superintendent about a madman who was crying and beating and beating his head against the wall. He had a beautiful picture of a woman in his hand. Asked the psychoanalyst what has happened to this man. The superintendent said, this man loved this woman very much. He went mad because the woman did not marry him. That is why he has gone mad and he is still wants to get married to that woman. Logically, it is simple. But next door to him was another madman and he was also crying and beating, beating his head. He had a picture of the same woman in his hand and he was spitting on the picture and using all kinds of four letter words. Now, the moment we say four letter words, we feel that this is not correct. Four letter words is ugly, dirty words. But this is the brand we have given. Love is a four letter word. And the most common four letter word that you know, that you use is not good, but move. Love. And if you look at all the four letter words, just try to research into it and see how many of these words are there which are very good and which carry a different kind of meaning. So this man was having, holding the same picture, picture of the same woman in his hand. He was spitting on it and hitting his head on the wall and using four letter words. While the first man has written the name of that woman all around the table, cell, on the walls, doors, everywhere. The psychoanalyst asked, what has happened to this man? He has the same picture, but his approach is different. What has happened? The superintendent said, this man was also madly in love with the same woman and she finally married him. So first man was in love with that woman, but the woman was not in love with that man. The woman was in love with the second man whom she married. Whenever, whether a woman rejects or accepts makes no difference. So the, the first man was rejected by the woman. And he was sad, he was mad. And second man was mad because he was accepted by the woman. Whether a woman or a man accepts you or rejects you makes no difference. 
Whether you get married or you don't, this too makes no difference. This is the situation of each one of us. This is the dichotomy. A woman rejects a man, he gets mad. A woman, the same woman, marries a man, he gets mad. I have seen poor people in misery and I have seen rich people too in misery. I have seen failures in misery and I have seen those who have succeeded also in misery. Whatsoever you do, finally you come to the goal and it is misery. Does every road lead to hell? What is the matter? Then there seems to be no choice. Yes, everything leads to misery if you remain the same and there is no change. If you change, if you bring about the inner transformation, everything leads to heaven, to bliss and harmony. If you remain the same, it is you, not what you do. And what you do is irrelevant. Deep down it is you, whether you hate, you will hate, or whether you love, it is you who will love and hate. The two situations, the subject is the same. In winter, you put on winter clothes. In summer, you put on summer clothes. But you remain the same. Guided by the circumstance and the nature, nature's degree, you move towards winter clothes or summer clothes. So too, it is you who finally creates the phenomena of misery or ecstasy, misery or bliss. And this continues, and this continues until you transform. Just by changing from love to hate, from this woman to that woman, What you do is irrelevant. Deep down it is you. Whether you hate, it is you who hates. Or whether you love, it is you who loves. So it is you who finally creates the phenomena of misery or ecstasy. Misery or bliss and it continues until you change. Now, in the East, we did not have the mechanism, in India specifically, we did not have the mechanism of keeping the body temperature warm. In the West, we do not have that arrangement to keep our body system warm. So we use external systems and many facilities are available. The winter clothes, the special clothes, gloves, special, special socks, shoes and things like these. So we have to focus on that to generate the heat within from outside sources. In India during winters, a special kind of foods are prepared. There are certain food ingredients which have a hot tendency. Dogs are very possessive of their space. They do not want anybody to filter through their space, but you do not learn from them. You have to be possessive of your inner space, inner silence. So during the winter season, 
different kinds of dishes are made. And when I say the heat means extra energy is generated by the use of food. In the West, we generate extra energy with the use of all kind of kinds of clothes. So ginger is one of the ingredients that is considered to be creating heat within the body. Just as when your immune system is weak, it attracts many kind of diseases. If your energy level is low, you will feel cold. So in Kashmir specifically, the foods that are created that are suitable for that kind of climatic conditions. We make dishes like Rogan Josh. Rogan means oil and Josh means enthusiasm. So the dishes are of a different quality. Ginger is used. We make ginger porridge. We use extra ginger in all the foods and we prepare dishes like that. In North India, when the winter season arises, we make different kind of dishes. For instance, flour is a very common, the whole wheat flour is a very common ingredient, food ingredients. During winter, we get dry fruits and nuts. They are rich source of energy in the form of omega-3, 6 and 9 fatty acid, rich source of protein. So certain things are made. Ghee, the clarified butter is used in abundance, ginger, dry fruits and nuts. This gives a different kind of energy that is that helps the body to offset the effects of cold. So this is where the inner mechanism changes. What you do is irrelevant. Deep down it is you whether you hate, you will hate or whether you love, you will love. So you are not affected by the outside condition instead during the approach of the winter you have prepared yourself. Just as when the spring season is over or the summer is over, you start preparing for winter season by buying the winter clothes. In India, when the winter season is approaching, we start preparing those dishes that are necessary for winter. So this is a kind of a roundel which is made with clarified butter, ginger, that is dry ginger powder, dry fruits, almonds, cashew nuts, walnuts, raisins and whole wheat flour. With the combination a roundel laddu is made and every day you are asked to take one in the morning and that keeps your body system, the temperature warm. So the change has taken place within you have prepared yourself for the upcoming season by changing your approach to it. So it is you who finally creates the phenomenon of misery or ecstasy, misery or bliss and this continues until you change. Just by changing or moving from hate to love, from this woman to that, from this house to that house, this man to that man will not help. You are wasting your time and energy. We hope that something will change. Things will change only if you focus on bringing a change within you. You have to change yourself first and with that change everything will begin to change. It is like what kind of shades you have on your eyes 
and it is through that glasses and me, the shade of the glasses that you look at the moon. When you are transformed, whatsoever you look at it, it will be a totally a different kind of a thing. I have heard there was a beautiful hill, two hills and in between there was a valley. A beautiful piece seen tourists used to go to visit that place. It happened three people from different professions went to visit that. First was a lover of nature. He lived at the two hills close by, in between the valley, the waterfall, a stream of a stream flowing through beautiful trees. What an example of nature's beauty. Nature has converged here in this spot in all its beauty and splendor was the remark of that person who was the lover of the nature. The next one was an engineer. He visited the place. What did he see? What a beautiful example of nature's architecture. I have never seen such a beautiful piece of architecture anywhere. Really, nature's architect in its glory. Third was a politician. What a criminal waste of energy in this desert place. No one is living here. Had it been in my constituency, I would have won the election. Had it been in my constituency, I would have won the election. Three different people, the circumstance, the situation, the sceneries, the scene, but their makeup of the mind was different. One was the lover of nature, the other was an architect, an engineer, the third was a politician, and the three gave three different versions of the scene. These examples I give you, you, will, you may laugh, but this is how the reality is. This is how we are. We see things as we are, not as they are. And when you move from one pole to another without bringing about the transformation in you, nothing is going to happen. You will be looking out for the tranquilizer of hope. Hope is a tranquilizer. Never use tranquilizers to feel happy. Instead, go into the go to the very pool of misery. The moment you go there, you wait through the smoke that surrounds you. You will be able to know the cause from where the smoke is coming, the effect is coming. And in discovering that, you have discovered the cause. And once you discover the cause, you can remove it. And that can be removed only by bringing about the inner change in you. And that is the way. 